I'm David Pfeiffer, a lecturer in the Emergency Medical Care Program here at EKU, and thanks for joining me as we talk about the basic anatomical structures of the heart and how blood moves through them in the body. What you're seeing on your screen is a rendering of the heart with a sort of a top-down view. If you were to be looking head-on at your patient uh, and maybe standing on a step stool or a step ladder just above them, sort of looking down upon the heart. We can see the great vessels of the body moving from left to right as we look at the heart. On the far left is the superior vena cava. This is a large vein that drains deoxygenated blood from your body into the heart so that it can be pumped to the lungs to pick up oxygen and be pumped outward to the body again. In the middle is the aorta. It's the largest artery of the body and it is the primary conduit through which fresh oxygenated blood is pumped out to the rest of the body after returning from the lungs. The blue structure to the right of the aorta is the pulmonary artery. This is a vessel that um, pumps uh, deoxygenated blood uh, into the lungs to pick up oxygen and return it to the, the ventricles of the heart. And the very last vessel on the far right-hand view with just a little bit of uh, red there around the tip is the uh, pulmonary vein that returns blood to the heart. Uh, we'll go over those in, in more detail here in just a second. But the important thing to know about this color coding on the heart is that it is essentially the reverse of the rest of the body. Uh, generally speaking, veins return blood to the heart uh, to pick up more oxygen. And that is true in the case of that superior vena cava um, there on the far left. Also, generally speaking, arteries pump blood away from the heart carrying oxygen, and they are red. And that is true in the case of the aorta right there in the middle. But these other two vessels are backwards. The, the pulmonary artery, uh, which is the, the third uh, great vessel there sort of in the middle of your view now, uh, is actually an artery because by definition it is moving blood away from the heart and that's what makes it an artery. But the blood is deoxygenated. It hasn't picked up oxygen from the lungs yet, so that's why it's blue. Likewise, this last vessel on the right is a vein even though it is red. Even though it's carrying freshly oxygenated blood, it's returning that blood to the heart so it is considered a vein. So now let's go into the heart and explore uh, what that means uh, in a little bit more detail. We now have this view of the heart cut in half, um, essentially as you look at it uh, from the same perspective we've been talking about this entire time. We have those great vessels on the top that you can see uh, from left to right, uh, but now we're looking inside the heart. So the way that blood flows is that it's uh, moving around your body and it has given oxygen to all your cells and tissues and organs, and it has accumulated carbon dioxide. And it's going to return to the heart first through that superior vena cava all the way on the left. Now an important point is that when we talk about the left and right side of the heart, it's actually the opposite of how you would be viewing it uh, as you look at your patient. We refer to anatomical positions as they exist in the patient or on the patient. So in other words, the left side of the heart, as you see it on the screen, is in fact the right side of the heart because this heart is in your patient's body and those structures are on their right side. So deoxygenated blood flows through the superior vena cava into the right atrium of the heart, which is that large, roundish, hollow space just below it. It then flows through the tricuspid valve, which is that whitish area just below the atrium. It's called a tricuspid valve because it has three components, three flaps that open and close uh, to, to allow blood to drain into the right ventricle, which is the reddish um, sort of uh, more pointed space um, towards the, the bottom of the right hand side uh, of the heart. So after this deoxygenated blood makes its way into the right ventricle, it is then pumped through the pulmonary artery into the lungs. So again, it's deoxygenated, but it's moving out of the heart, so it's still moving through an artery. So it moves through the pulmonary artery, which is that second blue great vessel at the top of the heart, into the lungs, where it picks up more oxygen. It sheds its carbon dioxide, which you exhale, it picks up oxygen from the lungs. And then it flows back into the heart through the pulmonary vein 
So again, this is a vessel that's returning blood to the heart, so it is considered a vein, but now it's oxygenated, and that's why it has that red color. So at this point, the blood is in the left ventricle. That is the roundish space towards the top of the uh, right-hand side of the view, as you see it on the screen, but it is, in fact, the left atrium. The blood is now in the left atrium, and it flows through the bicuspid valve. The bicuspid valve only has two flaps that open and close. And for that reason, it's sometimes referred to as the mitral valve because it looks like a mitre, which is a hat with uh, two large uh, flaps or points uh, that uh, sometimes the pope wears or other clergymen wear. So it's uh, the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. The blood then flows into the left ventricle, which is the uh, red area towards the bottom um, right-hand side of this view that you're seeing. From the left ventricle, it is pumped outwards to the body, carrying oxygen to supply all the different tissues and organs of your body. So that is the basic flow of blood through the heart and the heart's basic anatomical structures, and I appreciate you joining me for this explanation.